Right, so onto the barrels. Just going to get these uh, ready to be taken down for blast cleaning. So we've got the pillar studs here. Uh, and they, uh, the cylinder head uh, studs screw into the, the pillar stud and the pillar stud itself screws into the barrel. So we're going to just unscrew those, take them out. It may be, uh, and then these little dowels here are for the oilways, the oilways that come down through the head, down then through the barrels and drain back down into the crankcase. So they're the drain, um, sort of drain routes to get uh, oil from the valves drained back into the engine. It may be that these dowels need to come out later if we have to skim the head flat, um, but I'll leave them in for now. I'll just move the studs. And then uh, whoever disassembled the engine uh, quite rightly has tied up the um, tappets, cam followers, uh, so they don't all get mixed up. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out and I'm going to label each one uh, so I know where it goes back. Uh, and then later on, I'm going to take them down to the engineers. This one in particular looks pretty scored. Um, that one's obviously got a bad sort of hor you know, horizontal marking on it or crack, I'm not sure. But I'll take them down to the engineers. The, uh, what are these? They're the inlet? I'm not sure. Uh, these three look okay. I can never remember which way around they are. Um, and these three, we might be just be able to polish the um, polish the floors out. Um, but I'll take them out and mark them uh, so that I know which way, which when they go back in and which way around they go in. Uh, and when we've done that, then um, taking the pillar studs out, taking the tappets out, then the barrels are ready to go down uh, to be. Uh, last cleaned again we can see you know there's been an oil leak either from the head or or from somewhere above um but yeah they look okay we've got a very slight knock on this fin i might try just filing that out but the trouble is you file too much you lose the casting mark you know the, the sort of stippled casting if you start filing so let's be careful uh yeah um and uh yeah you can see there's quite a bit of oil on this side um i'm not too worried the bores might get damaged with the blasting but i'm not too worried because i'm fairly sure we're going to be uh, reboring this bike and at least or at least rehoning the cylinders so either way it doesn't matter if they get a bit marked because we're either going to rehone or probably rebore the the uh the cylinders anyway right uh so uh, just about got the barrels ready now to go down to be blast cleaned. I've taken the pillar bolts out. They didn't want to come out at all. So I've used a dear old uh, blowtorch uh, to heat up around the studs and eventually they came out. Heat is always your friend in cases uh, like that. Uh, I've taken the tappets out. What I've also done is I've also cleaned the, uh, i a bit careful because the, Barrels are hot from that. Use a blowtorch. I've also cleaned the worst of the oil and that off the uh, barrels because you don't want to be taking oily, horrible things down to be blast cleaned. You know, the blast clean will get all the ingrained gunge off and that, which is what you want, all the ingrained dirt, but all the horrible, sticky, oily mess, they don't want that at all. And so, um, you know, just, uh, just out of sort of courtesy, really, you want to get rid of all the oil oil and grease before you take them down uh, let's have a look yeah um, there's one thing I've found which I'm okay if we look at the uh, rubber sort of the these these rubber um, what do you call them they're like sticks and they go through the fins and they're an anti-ring to just stop the fins from ringing and uh, resonating when the bike's riding um, if you look, they've, they've got silver on them. And I think what's happened is someone has decided rather than uh, take all the barrels off and get them blast clean, they're going to use some silver paint, which is quite common. You know, people do, they want to buy looking good, but obviously it's a massive job taking everything apart and get it blast clean. So get a bit of silver paint and whack it on. 
And I think that's what's happened in this case at some point in the bike's history. Okay, there, there we go. They're all ready to go down uh, to be blasted now. Okay, um, <clears throat> we've got the uh, cylinder head and we're just going to take the valves out, ready to take uh, take the head down to be uh, vapor blasted. <laughs> As I noted before, one strange thing is it's got long valves, uh, long valves fitted, which, which I thought were only fitted to uh, earlier models. So I'm not quite sure why this has got long valves. Maybe they were replaced at some point. Uh, and uh, they were these were the only ones that were available I'm not sure but I think we're going to be replacing the valves anyway because uh, we're going to do a full job on this but the the head looks in you know okay condition I can't see any strip threads at first sight uh, the all the threads are okay on the uh, spark plugs there's no broken fins or bent fins crack fins so you know that's all good um, Obviously, it's been leaking oil and burning oil. So uh, it's been leaking maybe from the push around the push rod tubes that's on the front of the engine, uh, and the, the uh, you know the combustion chambers are pretty pretty sooty. So it looks like they've been burning uh, burning oil as well. Uh, but you know it's it, it's not in bad condition. It's not been you know there's no bent fins and etc etc you know it's it, it's pretty it's pretty okay it just needs a good clean up and we'll and then we'll put new valves in new valve guys we'll skin the head if necessary um but yeah you know i'm pleased with it there's no no major damage i'll be checking all the threads later but they all look okay so um you know it could be far far worse so you know <clears throat> it just needs a good clean up and no no sort of major um um, repair work to be done on the head so I'm going to set about um, removing the valves now which is all we need to do before we take this down to be uh, vapor blasted okay so uh, I've started to uh, remove the valves I'm going to remove the uh, next exhaust valve so I've got my uh, valve spring compressor essential for this uh, job uh, and the uh, so you've got that this open end and that open end goes over the top of the valve and then the other end goes on the bottom of the valve just going to loosen off the clamp a bit I just want to loosen it enough so that I can clamp it shut just a bit more there we go it's clamped shut now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten up the compressor and as I do that that's going to close it up and uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it up until the spring at the top is compressed enough that I can get the little collets out at the top now hopefully as I do it up we should hear a little ping and that will be the collets releasing let's see if we can hear that it'll be coming any minute now there you see right that was the, see that crunch that was the collets letting go and so they're now I can see they're now free but they're not free enough for me to get out so I'll now carry on doing the clamp up until the spring's pretty well compressed so i can now see the collets i know you can't <laughs> i'm sorry a bit on the wrong side but anyway i'm going to put my magnet now I've got a little magnet and put that on and that allows me to pull one of the collets free and then i get the magnet on the other col on the collet on the other side of the valve stem which is deciding it don't want to move there it goes and that's the other collet so that's both collets free so that now when i release the spring uh, there's no collet so the spring will come straight up so i'll let the uh, i'm gonna let the compressor go but it will recoil a bit and so i'll hold it because i don't want it to damage the uh, i don't want it to damage the head 
What I should do is slowly unscrew it. But because I'm taking the valves out rather than putting them in, I can release it without too much force damaging anything else with a compressor. I'll be glove caught in the compressor now. There we go. Right. Okay. So then we pull off the valve, two valve springs. And then we've got the actual valve itself. Comes out the bottom. And then we've got a little, uh, the actual uh, sort of base seating seating plate on the bottom for the spring. I'm just going to put the valve back in and I'm going to pull it in as pretty far up as I can. Oh dear. It's not feeling good that well. Anyway, there's a lot of play. These valves are quite badly worn. I tried it with the first valve. This valve, it doesn't even want to go there's something not right with that at all. It doesn't even want to go put back in, back into the valve guide. It's just gone back in, but only in one place. It's no, it's not good at all that valve. So anyway, there's quite a bit of wear on that on that shaft. You probably can't see it, but what you do is you put the valve virtually fully home, and then try rocking it. And if it rocks, it's worn. I mean, any valve will rock when it's nearly fully out. So don't don't try that. But. You want to get it fully home and then as fully home as you can then try rocking it and that's usually a pretty good sign of course you can measure it and so on but that's a pretty good sign it's worn and so far the first two valves i've taken out of both had quite a lot of rock they're, they're both pretty worn so we will be replacing the valves we will be replacing the valve guys and we might as well replace the valve springs at the same time but obviously over the years they they compress, they, they wear and they lose their uh, potency. I'll be bagging and tagging them anyway, but I think they'll all be replaced. But it's good to keep them because we, we need the collets and we need the, the valve spring cap and we need the valve spring base anyway. Okay, and I'll just carry on. I'll bag and tag those and then I'll carry on removing the rest of the valves. One thing I forgot to mention before was that when you put the compressor in and you go to try and get the little collets out like I use the magnet to free the collets and let's say you the, the, the collets free but you can't pull it out that's because you haven't tightened the compressor up enough okay if you if you if, if you can't fish it out you, you go and think oh it's loose but it's not coming out it's just it's just simply because you haven't tightened the compressor up enough so give that another couple of turns and then you'll find that the collets will come out no problem Okay.